We have spent some time talking about linear equations and linear functions, and we have learned to graph linear equations and functions. In this particular lesson, we are interested in looking at linear inequalities. Of course, the difference between an equation and an inequality is that rather than having an equal sign, we will have an inequality symbol such as less than or less than or equal or perhaps greater than or the combination greater than or equal. Let's take a look at a definition of what we mean by a linear inequality first of all. An inequality that can be written as AX plus BY is less than C or AX plus BY is less than or equal C where A, B, and C are real numbers with A and B not both zero is called a linear inequality in two variables. Now looking at this definition, notice that AX plus BY less than C is very similar to AX plus BY equals C. And recall we've had that definition in the past for a linear equation. The thing that makes this linear, recall, is that I have x and y in separate terms and both are to the first power, therefore we have linear. The inequality is because this says less than rather than equals. Of course, these inequality symbols could be saying greater than or greater than or equal and this would also be a linear inequality. Recall again, A and B cannot both be zero. One of them could be, so I might have just BY is less than C, or I could have just AX is less than C and still have a linear inequality. Now, you might think about uh, a simple example. If we have an equation that says X equals three, there is only one solution for that equation. If, however, I have an inequality that says x is less than 3, think about how many solutions there are. There are infinitely many numbers that are less than 3. With a linear equation, our solution consisted of infinitely many ordered pairs, all of which were on the line that we would graph. We're going to see that with a linear inequality, our solutions contain more than just points that are on a single line. What we're going to do is to look at a graphical method of finding the solutions of a linear inequality. So let's take a look at our first example. We are to sketch the graph of the solution set of y is greater than or equal negative 2. Now I think you can see this solution set intuitively one way and then we're going to talk about a procedure that we will go through to find the solution set. Recall that the horizontal axis is the x-axis and the vertical axis here is the y-axis. So first of all let's find where y is equal negative 2. Of course if we come down on the y-axis y is negative 2 at this point, isn't it? In fact any point along the horizontal line here has a y value of negative 2, doesn't it? So the points that are on this horizontal line here would satisfy y is equal negative 2. Notice, however, part of our solutions are going to be y values that are greater than negative 2. Where are the y values that are greater than negative 2? Those, of course, would be the y values up here, wouldn't it be? Because negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, all of those y values are larger than negative 2. You'll notice in this discussion we have not said anything at all about the x values. x is not in this inequality. We could put it in if we make it have a coefficient of 0. So 0x plus y being greater than or equal negative 2 is showing me that the value of x is not important for this discussion because 0 times any number is still 0. So this would not affect our solutions. Regardless of the value of x, all I'm concerned about is that the y value be greater than or equal negative 2. Now here's how we're going to sketch the graph of the solution set. The first thing that we're going to do is to take our inequality over here and write what I call the corresponding equation. 
In other words, we're going to rewrite this where we have an equal sign instead of the inequality symbol. Now we have learned in the past that an equation that says y equals negative 2 has a graph that is a horizontal line. And we, in fact, we have these dots down here indicating that horizontal line, don't we? Since part of our solutions are the y values that are equal negative 2, we're going to draw in this solid line where the y values are negative 2. But we also have y values that are larger than negative 2. We said those are up here, aren't they? So what we will do is we will take our pencil and we will shade in this region of the coordinate plane up here where the y values are larger than negative 2. This shaded region represents the solution set of this inequality. Notice that any point that appears below this line of y equals negative 2, its y coordinate will be what? Less than negative 2. It'll be things like negative 3, negative 4, and so on. So here's what happens with an inequality. If you change your inequality to an equal sign, you get what we call a boundary line. That boundary line will divide your coordinate plane into two regions in this case. All of your solutions will be on either one side or the other of the boundary line. In this case, our solutions are all above the boundary line. Now, one thing that's important here, if our inequality includes the equal part, the points that are on this boundary line are part of the solutions because these points have a y value of negative 2 and that satisfies this inequality. So here is our rule. We will write the corresponding equation. Then when we graph that corresponding boundary line, if our inequality says equal, we will graph a solid boundary line. We will then locate the region of the coordinate plane where our solutions are. We will shade in that region. Now, we're going to see in a minute that we have an inequality that does not include the equal sign. If that were to happen, we will make this boundary line a dashed line or a dotted line like that. The difference being with a solid boundary line, we're indicating that the points on the line are included in our solution set. If the points on, or if the boundary line is dotted rather, the points on that boundary line would not be included in the solution set. When we have an inequality like this with only one variable, it's usually very easy to determine which side of our boundary line we're going to shade in. Now let's look at a second example. Sketch the graph of the solution set of x is strictly less than, notice, 4. x is less than 4. Again, I'm going to bring this over here. My corresponding equation, changing that less than to an equal, would say x equals 4. Now, what does the graph of x equal 4 look like? That's a vertical line, isn't it? Through 4 on the x-axis. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's 4 on the x-axis. We're going to make this boundary line a dashed or a dotted line this time because in our inequality, notice it does not include equals 4. So we're saying the points on this line are not part of the solution of this inequality. Now let's decide, are my solutions to the left of my vertical line or are they to the right? Of course the numbers to the right of this vertical line would have x values that are bigger than 4, 5, 6, and 7, right? but the points to the left over here would have x coordinates that are less than 4. So we will be shading in the left hand region of this coordinate plane and this region here would include all of my solutions. Any point on this side of this boundary line have an x coordinate that is less than 4. Any point on the opposite side of this vertical line have x coordinates that are larger than 4 therefore they are not part of the solution. Now at this point we have simply graphed two inequalities that included only one variable. We're going to extend the idea that we've learned here to look at an inequality that contains both the x and the y. So let's take a look at that example now. Sketch the graph of the solution set of 3x plus 2y is less than or equal 12. Alright, 
let's come over here and write the corresponding equation. 3x plus 2y equals 12. I need to graph this line. One of the easiest ways to graph this line would be to first solve this equation for y so that I can put it in an easier form perhaps. So solving for y, I have 2y is equal to negative 3x plus 12. Dividing both sides by 2, my 2's over here cancel out, leaving me y. Negative 3 divided by 2 is negative 3 halves x, and a positive 12 divided by 2 is a positive 6. Now you can pick points or you can use your points or your slope intercept form here. The slope of this line is negative 3 halves and my y intercept is 6. So in other words if x is 0, y is 6. So let's use that idea to graph this boundary line. I'm going to locate the point 0, 6. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's right here. My slope is a negative 3 halves, so using rise over run, I will go down 3, 1, 2, 3, to the right 2, and locate this point. Now, before I draw in my boundary line, I'm going to look at this inequality. Notice that my inequality includes the equal. Since it includes the equal, I will make a solid boundary line instead of a dashed one. If that had said strictly less than, my boundary line would not be solid. So we're saying the points on this boundary line are part of the solution set. Now, you'll notice that this boundary line has divided my coordinate plane here into two half planes. So my solutions are either above the line over here or they're below the line here. Now, an easy way to determine where the solutions are is to use what we call a test point. So let's just choose a point, and notice here the origin is a nice easy point that we can use. The coordinates of the origin are 0, 0, aren't they? What we're going to do is to test these values, 0, 0, into the original inequality. So if x is 0, I have 3 times 0, plus y also being 0 says 2 times 0 is less than or equal 12. Of course, on the left-hand side I'm getting 0. Is 0 less than or equal 12? It is, isn't it? This is a true statement. That says this point is a solution to this inequality. Since the solutions are all on one side or the other of our boundary line, we know all of the solutions are over here, and so we could shade in this part of the half plane. Now, let me just show you there was nothing magic about this point right here. Uh, let's just choose another point. Uh, I think I'll choose this one right here where the coordinates are 1, 2. If x is 1 and y is 2. Let's use these values. If x is a 1, 3 times 1 is 3. Plus, if y is a 2, 2 times 2 is 4. Is this less than or equal 12? Well, yes it is. 7 is less than or equal 12, isn't it? That's true. What you will find is that any point you choose on this side of the line, if you substitute those coordinates into this inequality, you're going to get a true statement. Notice, however, if you pick a point over here, let's just choose that one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. X is 5. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Y is 5. Let's use those values. If X is a 5, 3 times 5 is 15. And if Y is also 5, 2 times 5 is 10. Am I getting a true statement here? 25 is not less than or equal 12. That is false. It turns out that any point you pick over here will give you a false statement. Now, is it necessary to choose points on both sides here? As it turns out, it is not. When I only have two regions here, if the point I choose happens to work, then I know my solutions are on this side of the equation. But if the point I pick does not work, suppose I had picked this point to begin with. When I choose it, it does not work. That tells me the solutions are not over here, so I would know by default the solutions have to be on the other side of this line. And so either way, we determine that the solutions to this inequality are all of the points with ordered pairs that are below this boundary line and also include the points on this boundary line. Now that we've done these examples, I want us to summarize what we've done 
by looking at some steps here. So let's look at what we go through when we graph a linear inequality. We will graph the boundary line, and notice I put an S here, lines, we're going to look in a minute at a system of linear inequalities where we have more than one. So if there's more than one inequality, there will be more than one boundary line. At any rate, graph the boundary line or lines as a solid or dashed line as indicated by the inequality symbol. Remember, if the inequality symbol includes equal, it's a solid line. If it does not include the equal part, it's a dashed line. Then, we will choose a test point in one region of the Cartesian plane and determine if it is a solution, notice, to the original inequality. Very important that you go to that original inequality. If there's more than one inequality, it has to be a solution for all of those. If the point is a solution, in other words, we get a true statement, we're going to shade that region. Now, if not, we will repeat steps two and three. I remind you that in the example I just did, I didn't really have to repeat. If the point I choose is not a solution, since there's only one other region, I have to be over here. We will look at an example in a moment, though, where there's more than two regions. And in that case, it will be necessary to repeat these two steps. Now look at this again. First, we're graphing the boundary line. Where do we get the equation of the boundary line? From the corresponding equation. We rewrite the inequality as if it said equal and graph that boundary line. Then we'll choose a test point and determine where our solutions are. What I would like for you to do now that we've kind of seen a couple of examples and looked at these steps, let me put another example here. And I would suggest that you pause your tape you can push your pause button there and stop the tape or copy down this equation or this inequality rather and spend a little bit of time, stop your tape, work through this particular example, see if you can get the solution. And then when you finish, restart your tape and I will work this problem for you and you can check yourself to see if you have the idea of how to graph the solution set. Okay, if you have done that now, let's take a look at the solution. The first thing I'm going to do is to write the corresponding equation here. 5x minus 3y equals 6. Now let's solve this for y. Negative 3y is going to equal what? Subtracting 5x. I have a negative 5x plus 6. We will divide both sides by negative 3. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 is a positive 1y. A negative divided by negative, I have 5 thirds here, x. And a positive divided by negative is a negative 2. So my slope for this line is positive 5 thirds. My y-intercept occurs at x equals 0, what? y equals negative 2. This is my y-intercept. So let's graph this point, 0, negative 2. My slope says rise 5, run 3. So from here up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, run, 1, 2, 3, that's this point. Now remember, before you draw the line in, look at your original inequality. Does it include the equal? No, it doesn't. That means this boundary line will be a dashed line or a dotted line, not a solid line. We'll put arrows to indicate that continues. Now, we have two regions, don't we? We're going to pick a test point in one of these regions. Now, usually if I have the origin available, I like to use that because it's so easy to substitute in zeros. You want to be careful. The point that you pick can be in either region. It just cannot be on the boundary line. Okay, so notice the zero, zero is not on that boundary line, so we're okay. So using zero, zero as a test point. If I substitute 0 in for x and 0 in for y, I want to know, is this greater than 6? Well, let's see, this side is 0. Is this a true statement? No, 0 is not greater than 6. This is false. Now, that tells me what? My solutions are not over here. Since they're not over here and there's only one other region, I'm going to shade this region here. My solution set will be here. 
Notice the points on the boundary line are not part of the solution in this example. How did you do with that? I hope that with these examples you've seen how to work with one inequality. What we're going to do next is to look at a system of inequalities. Now you've seen systems of equations before. You know that to have a solution to a system of equations, your solution has to work in every equation. The same thing is true with inequalities. Our solutions have to be true for every inequality in the system. So remember your steps. We're first going to graph the boundary lines. In this case, there will be more than one. We will make dashed or dotted or uh, solid lines exactly like we did before based on the same criteria. Then we will choose a test point in one of the regions that has been formed by those boundary lines. And we'll check that in that original inequality. If we're lucky with our first point and it is a solution, then we're finished. We can shade in that region. If we do not find the solution by that first test point, then we'll go to a different region and try another test point. Let's look at an example now to see how this works. Sketch the graph of the system or, or of the solution set of the following system of inequalities. You'll notice here I have two inequalities. All right, we're going to start with inequality number one and write the corresponding equation. X minus Y is equal three. Now I think I'm going to graph this one a little bit differently. I've been using that slope intercept form, but what about just finding intercepts? If I choose X to be zero, then it's not there. If negative y is 3, then y is what? Negative 3? Okay. If I choose y to be 0, then this term would be missing and I would have x is equal 3. So let's just graph those points. 0, negative 3, and 3, 0. Now my question is, do I make this a solid or a dotted line? Look at your original inequality that this came from. Does it include equal? No. So this one is a dotted boundary line. So we have that boundary line. Now, let's go to number 2. My corresponding equation, 2x plus y is equal 5. Let's solve for y. y equals negative 2x plus 5. We'll use slope. Slope is negative 2 over what? 1. My y-intercept, if x is 0, y is 5. So let's locate the point 0, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. My slope is negative 2 over 1, so I will go down 2 to the right 1. Again, before I draw that in, the original inequality is here. Notice this one includes equal, doesn't it? So we are going to make a solid boundary line here. Now, notice this time, because of my two boundary lines, how many different regions do I have? Do you see that there's four? There's this region here. There's the region between the boundary lines up here. There's this region here and this region down here. So I have four regions. That means I might have to try four points before I find solutions. Well, let's see. Let's just start over here. I'm going to pick my easy point again, my origin, which is in this region right here. So using my 0, 0, I have to check this point in both of these inequalities. Well, notice, if x and y are both zeros, that would say 0 is less than 3, which is true, isn't it? Here, if x and y are both zeros, I have 0 is greater than or equal 5. What about that? That's false, isn't it? Well, so the solutions are not here, okay? Well, let's see. Let's just uh, pick another point. Where do you want to go? You want to, I'm going to pick one over here. This will be easy. I'm on the x-axis here. 1, 2, 3, 4. My x value is 5 and my y value is 0. 5, 0. Let's try these numbers. If x is 5 and y is 0, I have 5 minus 0 is less than 3. Don't I? Is 5 less than 3. Oops, false. Now I don't even have to check the other one then, do I? Because guess what? It won't be a solution because it's not a solution in the first one. Okay, well let's see. Where else can we go? How about 
Uh, here's a point down here. Let's see, what's my x coordinate? 2 and my y coordinate is negative 3. 2, negative 3. Let's try that point. If x is 2 minus y is negative 3, is that less than 3? Well, minus a negative is plus a positive. 2 plus 3 is 5. Is that less than 3? That's false. So could that be a solution? No. Well, must be this region up here. Okay, well let's see. Double check. Let me pick a point up here. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's try the point 3, 4. See if I can scoot over here. 3, 4. We're going to check that point. If x is 3 minus y is 4, is that less than 3? Well, 3 minus 4 is a negative 1. Negative 1 is definitely less than 3, isn't it? So that's true. Well, let's try this one. If x is a 3, 2 times x is 6, plus y is 4, is that greater than or equal 5? Well, 10 is greater than or equal 5 is also true. So we were, finally, in the right region for our solutions. Now, I kind of purposely did this this way so we would end up with that solution region last. But notice that if I had accidentally gone from here up to here and picked a point, I would have found the solution the very second time that I tried. Once you know you have the region with the solutions, there's no reason to try all of the other areas. So how many times you have to try depends on how quickly you find that solution set. Now that we've looked at this system, let me come back to our steps, and this may make a little bit more sense than it did a while ago. Graph the boundary lines. There was more than one. Use solid or dashed lines as indicated. Choose a test point in one region. Okay, determine if it's a solution to the original inequality or notice inequalities. It's got to satisfy them all. If it is a solution, shade that region and you're finished. If not, you're going to go back to step two, go to a different region and choose a test point. As soon as you find the solutions, then you are finished with your graphing. Now, I'm going to do like we did a while ago. I've got another example here where I have two inequalities. Let me suggest again that you pause your tape, work this problem, see if you can find the region, and then turn your tape back on and we will work through it again and see if you have the correct answer. Well, let's take a look to see how you did. Okay, for our first inequality, number one, the corresponding equation is 3x plus 5y is less than z. I'm sorry, I'm saying equation, I'm writing less than, equal zero. Um, well, let's see, if I solve for y, 5y equals negative 3x, dividing by 5, y is negative 3 fifths x. My slope, is negative 3 fifths. If x is 0, what's y? It's also 0. This is my y-intercept. So 0, 0 is my point. I will go down 1, 2, 3 to the right, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 3 fifths. Solid or dashed? It's not solid, is it? We don't have the equal here. So we will make our little dotted line. Okay. And then we're going to go to our second inequality and write the corresponding equation. x minus 3y equals 9. Let's solve for y again. Negative 3y is negative x plus 9. Dividing both sides by negative 3, I get a positive y, a positive 1 third x, and a negative 3. So my slope is 1 third. If x is 0, y is negative 3. Okay, so 0, negative 3. I will go up 1 to the right, 1, 2, 3. Again, this will be a dotted or dashed line because I do not have the equal part in my inequality. And of course, again, because of the two boundary lines, I have 1, 2, 3, 4 regions. Okay. So, notice this time I can't use the origin. See, my boundary line goes right through that 0, 0 point, so I won't be able to use that for this particular example. Okay? 
All right, well, let's see. I like to choose points that are kind of easy. I think what we'll do, let's start with this region here, and I'm going to choose a point on the x-axis. One, two, three. This point has coordinates negative four, zero. All right? Okay, well, let's test that point. If x is negative four, three times negative four is a negative 12. Okay? Y is zero, so five times zero is zero. Is negative 12 less than zero? That's true. Okay, well, let's try it down here. X is negative four. Y is zero, so subtract zero. Is that less than nine? Well, negative four is less than nine. Is that right? That's also true. Well, I think we found our solutions then, haven't we? We will shade in this region. You'll notice we hit it first time. Now, if you don't trust yourself, you could go ahead and find a test point in each of the other regions and decide whether or not you had solutions. For instance, uh, let's choose something easy here in this region. One, two, three, four, five. Y is negative five. So I'm looking at zero, negative five. Look what happens if you try those points. If X is zero, well, what do you have here? You've got a zero. Five times negative five is a minus 25. Is that less than zero? Yeah. But look here, if X is zero, you have a negative three times a negative five is a positive 15. Is that less than nine? No. And you'll find if you go on around and pick a test point, these other regions will not work. So here, I just got lucky, found that solution set with the first try. I hope your graph looks something like this. I have one more example that I want to do in this section, and this is another system, but it contains three inequalities. Okay, same steps, just like we did before. Let's start with our first inequality here, number one. The corresponding equation is going to say x plus y equals 7. Now, this one's going to be easy to do with intercepts. If x is 0, what's y? It's got to be 7, doesn't it? What if y is 0? What's x? It's got to be 7. So I have the point 0, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 barely fits. And 7, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Dotted or dashed line, do you see it says equal? So we're going to make this one a solid boundary line. Okay, so we'll go across here, solid boundary line. Okay, number two, corresponding equation, 3x minus 2y equals 4. Let's solve this one for y. Negative 2y is negative 3x plus 4. We're dividing by negative 2. See if you can follow. If we divide by negative 2, we get positive 1. Dividing here by negative 2, we get a positive 3 halves x. Dividing positive 4 by negative 2, we get a negative 2. So what's my y-intercept? If x is 0, y is negative 2. Let's find that point. And my slope is a positive 3 halves, so we'll go up 3, 1, 2, 3, to the right, 2. This one does not include the equal, so I'm going to do a dotted line on this boundary line. Okay, now that's kind of like what we had before, but I've got one more boundary line to do. Number three. Corresponding equation is x equals negative 5. That's a vertical line at x equals negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's going to be vertical. It's going to be a dotted line, isn't it? Okay. Now, Notice this keeps coming up here. This keeps coming down here. Let me do that. Let's talk about the regions. I'm going to have a region over here that is to the left of this vertical line, right? I'm going to have a region in here, this triangular shaped region. I've got to have a region down here, a region in between here, a region up here. And let me show you if I continued, my graph isn't really big enough here, I'd have a region up here. And notice if you continue here, another region down here. So let's see, There's I'm going to number these. Here's region 1, here's region 2 in between here, here's region 3, region 4, here's region 5, let's say, 6, and 7. Does that look like all the different regions that we have? So we've got a lot of places to go. Now, I'm going to make a suggestion. 
Notice this last inequality, x has to be greater than negative 5. Does that tell you something about the regions to the left of this? Is there any reason we should try these three regions? Do you see that there's not? Because anything to the left of this vertical line, the x coordinates can be less than negative 5. So we don't need to do that. We can just concentrate on these regions right here, can't we? Okay, well let's see. Um, where do you want to start? I notice the origin's available. Let's try that right quick. If I try the point 0, 0, which is in this region 5 as I've numbered it, 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 is less than or equal 7, so it's true in the first equation. 0, 0. 0 is less than 4. That's true. Is 0 greater than negative 5? It sure is, isn't it? I think we've got it. Right here. Again, you could check some other points if you're unsure of yourself. Let's notice just quickly right here, I have x is 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the point 4, 0. If you put a 4 here and a 0 here, 4 is less than 7. That would be true. If you put a 4 here, though, and a 0 here, 3 times 4 is 12. That is not less than 4, so it wouldn't work in this inequality. You'll find other contradictions there. Now let me talk about this region in here. Notice that we're talking about this triangular-shaped region. It's important that you understand the points that are on this boundary line are part of the solutions. But notice the points on this boundary line and this boundary line will not be part of the solution because of those dotted lines there. So you've got all the points in this triangular shape plus the points on this one boundary line right there. Just the part from there to there. I hope that with these examples that uh, you're beginning to see exactly what to do with these linear inequalities. Now, of course, if we get a lot more inequalities, it, it gets to be kind of uh, a big problem in, in terms of how many regions that you have. But just remember, if you systematically take each of those regions and find a test point, then you're going to find that solution set eventually. This concludes the lesson on linear inequalities. I would ask that you please rewind your tape before you turn it back into the math lab. Thank you.